Devil, we're believing for your healing in Jesus' name. Walk in victory. Come on.
right here right now he has chosen you guys to hear his word God right. I mean if anyone has ears let him hear okay the word of the Lord today so uh, we want to welcome you again this is higher place church and this is loving you to the truth broadcast can you guys see Angelo sorry you guys didn't hear see him play piano but he was he was playing live so um, so welcome again. Please, I want you to take time to go to higherplacechurch.com and see what our ministry is all about. So important when you are checking out a ministry to, to see exactly what they believe in their belief system and, and what they believe in terms of the Word of God and what their vision is. So, so important to go to higherplacechurch.com and you can also donate there. Um, that would be so incredibly appreciated. Yes, you, know, they can, you know what? If they we they could do the one K club, you know, one dollar a month. Is that what, is that what oh. some of these radio stations what? do? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> and oh, if you like the music today, you can go to Angela and Veronica dot com. You know what? I love what Jesus says. Just give what's in your heart. If you if you if you have the means and you have the the uh, the affordability to give, then give. You know what? Paul said you don't have to give it all. So, so the rules have been changed. Right, it's not a commandment, but he want uh, he want he wanted the believers no. at uh, at uh, Corinth to excel in their giving all at the same time. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Under no obligation. And I, and I also yeah. want to explain to this this periscope, our church is a husband and wife team. We're not just Angelo by himself and Veronica by herself. Even though we're two individuals, we bring different things and different talents and and. In, uh, into this ministry and God is using Veronica in so many ways to to reach and to do the research that needs to be done to uh, uh, help y'all you know what and so just encourage you know pray for us when you think about Angela and Veronica think about us because you know we're in a different season a different time where we have to we're being challenged on every side and uh, you know what and I, and I believe that you know that Every pastor should have a job. I don't see these guys out there doing what they need to be doing. So, you know what? I'm excited that we're just obeying God. We're Amen. obeying God. Amen. Word. Yeah, we're doing but, the uh, best that we can. Doing so, this can. no devil. Hmm. All right, no devil. You can't have my family. Amen. Amen. Oh How many of you agree with me? <laughs> with that, no devil. You can't have my family that's that right. is the title of this message all right so um this is actually uh based on a dream that i had uh late last year and uh in the dream i was walking down a corridor um well this involves you <laughs> oh, really? i was walking down a corridor she's she's here today so um the beautiful in the dream i was walking down a corridor with our daughter and uh, we were walking hand in hand, and I remember seeing this it's like a white 
corridor that we were walking in, like a white building. Um, we were walking down the corridor, and uh, we were walking arm in arm. I remember we were like, holding hands or in arm in arm or something. We were holding on to each other. And uh, all of a sudden, I felt something try and come in between us. I actually felt a hand. A hand was trying to push me away from my daughter. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, a lot more forceful than that. So I even felt the, the fingers of the hand and this, this invisible hand was trying to push her away from me. Um, so it was invisible, I couldn't see. I couldn't see it, uh, but I felt the hand uh, just pushing me, just forcing me, forcing me out of the, out of the picture, you know? So, uh, so I woke up, this dream, you know, really impacted me. And I mean, I still, I still remember it very, pretty vividly. And I even, we even wrote a song. That's right. We even wrote a song and hopefully that'll be released sometime next year. I hope, yep. um, and the song talks about, and I, I mean, I know, I know what it was in the dream. I know that it was um, some sort of evil presence uh, fighting me for my daughter and for my children, okay? So, uh, so the song talks about fighting for, for our children, and that's where, kind of what brings us to today. Um, no devil, you can't have my family, you can't have my children, you can't have my husband, you can't have my wife, you know? Um, so this song uh, is about spiritual warfare. And, and it's so funny because when you're dealing with something invisible, you have to learn how to fight through spiritual means. Well, the word says, our fight is not against flesh and blood. Yes. Right? So in those, we make everything so in the natural, in the physical, you know. So yeah. the Bible tells us clearly that we're to fight spiritually. Spiritually. And the only way you can fight spiritually is in this word. Okay, exactly, so. exactly. So, <clears throat> oh, man, so I'm not gonna give up my family to the devil, no okay? No. Um, I'm gonna learn every means of spiritual warfare I can to fight the enemy and win. And we're gonna go through this how you all can fight for your family through uh, through spiritual means, and 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 I hope that I hope uh, that God, as you do these things, that God will fill in the blanks of the practical things that you can also do. Okay, because it's not just it's not just only about the spiritual, even though the spiritual is extremely important. I mean, it's the most important thing, but there are practical things that you can do as well, and I really want God to fill those things in, and we, we probably will touch upon some of them today. So uh, Joshua 24, 15 says, as for me and my house, mm. we will serve the Lord. Lord. We will serve the Lord. That's right. So I just want to show you that there is, is, is a spiritual attack on the family that is coming from the spirit of this world. Right out of television. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. It has to do with television. Well, every, everything. It has to do with everything in this world. Well, he's the prince so, of the air, the devil. That's right, prince of the power of the yep. air. Aleister Crowley, who was a Satanist and black magician, we have talked about him here before many times, somebody that you all should know because he was very, very used by the enemy, okay, to destroy the family. Mm -hmm. So he was a Satanist and black magician. He was also a, a Freemason. And the person, uh, the person who is, he's the person who has had the most influence on the entertainment industry. Correct. Every facet mm -hmm. of the entertainment industry, Aleister Crowley has influence. Every single artist that you probably love, okay, every single secular artist that you that you absolutely love, has been has been influenced somehow, some way directly by Aleister Crowley or by other followers and disciples of Aleister Crowley. Well, it's amazing, Veronica, because on my job, when I drive people around, okay, I'm always playing your music, the songs you write. Our music. Well, our music. it's our music, but you're singing. I, 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 I play your voice, because you are you're, you're talented beyond measure. God has graced you with talent 
that is amazing. Okay, not only singing, but writing. And a lot of times I, I'll, I'll, I look at people's faces and because they've never heard of you before. Who's, who's Veronica? Of who's course. It? Okay, but of course, well, I'm getting there. Okay. And they go, what? Where, this, this, this girl said to me, she was going to hear her girlfriend who was a singer. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, she goes, I've never heard a girl singer like Veronica in my whole life. And I said, well, it comes with a compromise. If you want to be famous in this world, then you have to compromise. You have to do things that you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to do things, and, you, and you'll have to do things to compromise not only God, but compromise yourself. Yeah. Your, your, your self-respect. Your, 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 your yeah. person. Yeah, that's it. Your whole okay? person. Because you have to sell. It's really prostitution is what it really is, Veronica. Yeah. Yeah. It is amazing because they're building a, a complex here in Nashville, Tennessee, and it's going to host the Grammys years for years to come. It's right downtown, and, uh, and the Grammys, by the way, are all bought. That's okay, right. and people think, oh, they, yeah. they, 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 Kirk Franklin won all those Grammys. No, he, they bought them. They bought the Grammys. They didn't earn the Grammys. They bought them. And see, people have to realize the truth. See, that's what we're going to tell you here. We're going to tell you the truth. Okay, this is not some crazy talk. This is the real deal. The real deal, we've been in the music industry for 26 years. Okay, so we've experienced, we've seen it, and I'm telling you, Everything what you see is not what it appears to be. That's right. Open your eyes to the real reality of this world. Even the Oscars Hardly and things like that. Anything you see in movies and television is real. That's right. Hardly anything. It's all and, and, and most things in music are not even real. Not even politics. It's all computerized. Every it's all auto tuned and hello? Yeah. So um so anyway, Alistair Crowley is 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 the number one influence in the entertainment industry every single facet okay that's why you need to know anybody who listens to music looks at movies uh whatever entertainment you enjoy you need to know who alistair crowley is and where the source of this uh sorcery. there's a message the source guys right. behind the music there's a message to mm -hmm. these movies and and this television and the uh tv you know there's there is an underlying subliminal message coming to you so well, he I, said okay. the family he said the family is public enemy number one mm -hmm. so the spirit behind entertainment nearly all entertainment is the spirit of antichrist amen he was he That's wanted right. to be the beast 666 right you know so he said horrid word Family, he said, family is a horrid word. So Alice Bailey, the foremost prophetess of the New Age and a theosophist, okay, she believed that Lucifer was God. Okay, guys, look it up. Alice Bailey, we've, we have spoken about oh, her yeah. before. Okay, wrote a 10-point charter to change Christian tradition to usher in the new world order, which is just a fancy word for the the Antichrist sure. kingdom that the Re Book of Revelation talks about, okay, so just a fancy word for that. Um, and she said in point number three, hmm. destroy the Judeo-Christian family structure or the traditional Christian family structure. Destroy hmm. the Christian family. She said, Alice Bailey said, liberate the people from the confines of this structure, okay? From the confines of a, a man and a woman being married and having children, okay? I mean, she said, liberate the people from the confines of this structure. It is oppressive. The family is the core of the nation, all right? It is the core of the nation. She said, if you break the family, you break the nation, and she was absolutely right. Yeah, you know what we do? We take our children, and we throw them on a school bus, and we send them to some place. <laughs> right, and they go is to a prison. Is that what you did? Yeah, I went to, well, <laughs> well, I got thrown off the bus because I punched everybody on the bus. I was a very violent young man. So they, they took me off the bus, 
didn't make my mother too happy. Yeah, yeah. That I got punched. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you, no, I mean, guys, you know, it, we gotta pay attention, you know. But I wanna go back real quick when I was talking about marketing and money. I saw this big sign for this church that they got 30,000 members of this okay. church, right? Okay. And this is what I'm talking about, how church has become the divider of the family. Mm. Because, because, what? yeah, because these guys are imposters. Well, false churches, yes. Right downtown Nashville is the biggest billboard of a church I've ever seen in my entire life. I've never seen anything like it, of an imposter. Okay, the guy's an imposter, and all these people support these churches. Okay, and they go to the church, and they expect their families to have a safe haven to go to. Okay? And you're sitting under an imposter. That's where we are. We go in the mall, we see churches that are being marketed. You know what? It's like we're marketing the gospel and we're not marketing family. We're not we're not we're not we're not saying, you know, keep the family together. We're saying it's more important that the church gets bigger and larger. Well, I was gonna say if we preach the gospel, that that's gonna heal families. If you preach yeah, the gospel. If you preach the gospel, yes. Okay, all right. So Alice Bailey understood that if you destroy Christian morality, you destroy the family. Okay? Ooh. So she understood that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So she had this, this telepathic um, uh, relationship with... Um, with the, uh, gosh, I forget the name. It, he was a Tibetan and he was a master. Uh, this spirit came to her and fed her all these lies. <laughs> Guys, this she's not a nobody. They have adopted this into the United Nations, mm -hmm. okay? That's why this nation is so destroyed, mm -hmm. all right? That's why you have divorce. The Divorce is rampant. Okay? That's why homosexuality oh, is rampant. There you go again, judging people that get divorced. So, <laughs> What's wrong? I had a big conversation this morning with a couple. They said, how do you stay, how do you stay not divorced? How do you, how do you wow. not get divorced? How do you stay not divorced? Oh, okay. Right. We should do a message on that. Right. How do you stay not divorced? <laughs> you better keep Jesus in that relationship. Exactly. Or you will have no marriage. That's exactly. So that's what we're talking about here. So realize there is a definite agenda. Definite agenda that sa that Satan has planned, okay? And we again we see this in the Word of God to destroy your family mm -hmm. and the the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. He wants to destroy uh, God in our hearts, mm -hmm. okay, and replace it with every other thing. So, but realizing where this emanates from, so when we realize the source and the root of this is the devil. <laughs> then now we know we have the power in Christ Jesus to counteract it mm -hmm. and overthrow the enemy's plan. Exactly. So, so we have to outthink the devil. You know, we have to be two steps ahead of him. Yeah. And if we're not two steps ahead of him, then we're going to get tripped up. And that's his job. His job is to mess us up. Yes. And he's doing a good job. I got, I got to give him credit. You know, but uh, he will not get the victory. Amen. So how to fight for your family, guys. Mm. Please um, also look in your Bibles as you're watching this, okay? Because we're going to give you the scriptures. How, excuse me, how to fight for your family. Number one, pray regularly, mm -hmm. okay? You do not have to pray long, but you need to pray often. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for their long, drawn-out prayers that were just for show, that were just for pretense. Oh, travailing, travail, travail. Let's sing the same song over. Oh, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Let's go back to the song. It's all about the song. It's all about me. Thank me. Thank me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, well, that's what it becomes. It becomes self-indulgence. Yeah. It becomes, you get self-absorbed in this in this in this mind control music that we have in these churches okay wow. that's weak wow. it wow. is weak and feeble because wow. they're not singing out of the abundance of their heart which is the, the word says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks sing unto me a new, new song. song sing unto yes. me something
something fresh. That's right. It's like, it's like, right. That's why we always sing original songs here, and we'll always do always. original uh, uh, music yeah. here at High Place Church. I, no, I want to if you, if this. you have any idea the type of industry that your worship music comes from, oh, if you God. have any idea, so guys, you can go back in our messages, and we yeah. freely share this now mm. as pastors because it is our responsibility. Well, I, I saw one artist, a Sony artist, and they were having a, a record release party, and there's the people with their wine glasses and drinking, drinking up and celebrating this this phony, fake, imposter music musician at Sony gospel music and people are going to celebrate it and you know what but we're not going to tolerate it here okay because you need to repent or likewise perish i'm going to tell you right now because that music you allow it into your house there's adulterous music because these people get they get divorced then they write this music and you go right out and buy it on itunes because Oh, it's the it's anointed of God. And you bring it into your house, and that spirit of adultery falls down in your house, and you wonder why you, your family's messed up, why your family's jacked up, because you're allowing this adulterous foolishness into your house. It's time to shut the iTunes off, okay? If you can't control yourself, shut it off, because it becomes then... An idol. Exactly. It becomes an idol. All right, so, so that is... Uh... That's another message, and you can go back in our messages to, to hear our, our thoughts about that. But um, so back to praying regularly. Guys, this is so important. Um, and just what I gather and, and just what I do is, um, and, and what I think is to, it's better to pray every hour yeah. than to pray for an hour. Ooh, that's good. It's better to pray yeah. every hour then pray for an hour. Again, God doesn't want vain repetitions. And I, God doesn't want your long, drawn-out prayers. This. Let me finish this one thing. Because it's a, somebody, somebody might say, oh, you're picking on this one artist of these people. Let me tell you something. And you're, you're just jealous because they're successful. But let me tell you something. I'm not jealous of foolishness. I'm not jealous of somebody who's going to hell. I'm not jealous of that stuff. Okay? I, I don't even care if they own... A, a, a house on the top of a mountain and a Bentley and a Rolls and a jet. They can have all that stuff. But I'm telling you guys, you got to wake up. Do your research. Go Google these people's names and Google some Freemasonry or, or a, 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 a something. Fraternity. fraternity. Fraternity, whatever. Sorority or whatever that you feel that this artist may be involved in and do your homework before you allow it into your house. To destroy your family. Okay, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Ooh. I mean, never stop praying. Yeah. Never stop right. communicating with, with God. God. Mm -hmm. Never stop speaking to God. Never stop speaking His Word. Never stop listening to God. That's good. Okay, so First we not only yeah. speak to God, okay, in our prayers, communicate with God. Um, pray his word, and we're, we're going get to get into that more, but we also listen to what he has to say. And if what you hear from God is mm. any different from, from what the word of God says, it is not, it's not his spirit. Oh, God, okay, yeah. so just so you know, you got to test those spirits. But anyway, the Bible says pray without season, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, Luke 18, then uh, Jesus, he, he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray. Men always ought to pray and not lose heart. You know, I know that's, that's hard for me. I have a I brother always, that I pray with every yeah. day. We, 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 well, we, 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 we talk about different things and different subjects. We pray every day. Yeah, we we do, about. No, I, no, but <laughs> yeah. I'm saying with somebody else, I, I have a man yeah. friend in my life yeah, who, who I'm able to pray with every day and it's awesome because you know, we're being edified. We're being uh, uh, strengthened. We're, 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 we're flexing our muscle to the enemy. Okay, We're increasing in, in power and in authority when we pray. And we're, that's why it's important to pray because there's going to be trouble. Trouble will come in this world. Okay, Just because you're a believer, a Christian, 
They've been, you know, a lot of young Christians but have been prayer, told nothing's going to happen but to them. prayer prepares you for that trouble. That's right. You know, and that's, Absolutely. that's inevitable. Okay, because yep. that's what this world brings. So if you want to know how often to pray, 2 Timothy 1, 3 says, I thank God whom I serve mm. with pure conscience. Con conscience. That's what Timothy said, okay? Yeah. I serve God with pure conscience as my forefathers did. As without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day. Mm -hmm. So how often do you pray? Night, night and day. Day and night, night and day. Without ceasing, all right? Don't give up. Okay, number two. Find a prayer partner, and you just touched upon that. Find a prayer partner. So we started praying together um, as a family in 2014, mm -hmm. every night. You know, most times it's just, it's just me and you, but right. sometimes the kids the will, will join you. in. Sure. Yeah. So, and, and <clears throat> you know, we want them. We want it to be the whole family. That's right. You know? Um, so this, this is, I mean... It's not like this is not a challenge. It is. It is with people's schedules. It's very you know, much a Everybody challenge. doing something different. So this is a challenge, but this, this has made such a huge change in our lives. It has brought about so much truth and answered prayers. Yeah, let's, let's take the prayer out of this house and see what you got. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> exactly. So if your spouse or family will not pray with you, and we, we, get, we, we understand that. Um, find a trustworthy believer. Guys, not just anybody, right. okay? Not just anybody, somebody very trustworthy. Not a Sony and, gospel artist. And a, and a, a believer, yeah. right. okay? Um, but know that even if, you're, even if you can't find somebody to pray with you, know that praying alone is powerful mm -hmm. in itself, okay? But there's something about that two or more. Okay, Matthew 18, 19, 20. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, mm. it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. It's so Jesus. there's just something about the two or more. Mm. We believe that that makes a church. That's right. That's what constitutes a church. Two no, no, or no, no. more. We get a gathering members. Gathering. No, two or more oh, gathering together in Jesus' name. <laughs> two or more gathering together Come in Jesus' name. That, that is a church, okay? That's right. So James, uh, you don't have to be an organization. You don't have to be 501c3. You don't have to be, no, no. You don't, you don't have to have that? Yeah, but yeah. How, what, how am I going to get a summer yeah, really, home? Really, you shouldn't. <laughs> How am I going to get a summer home if yeah. I don't have a 501 c 3 You get to, oh my goodness, and a vacation plot. Right. <laughs> James 5.16, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another mm. so that you may be healed. Amen. Guys, you need another, if you're going to confess your, confess your sins yeah. to one another and pray for one another, you need another person. Okay? So, and that is going to bring healing to your life. There's so many times when I have to have Angelo, pray for me, okay? He's praying for me for, for my eczema to heal. Right. He prays almost every night, okay? And, and I mean, this is, I believe this is going to bring about healing. I know it is, okay? And she prays for my anger. You know, and, and, you know what? It, you, you, it seems like I'm angry about the Sony music foolishness. I am. I'm very, you know, I'm running, I just, I just can't let it, I'll tell you. It's important because this is an enemy of the family. This is not a friend of God. This is an enemy of God. It is coming into your home via Sony Music. I'm telling you guys, you so really got to pay attention. The effective, fervent prayers of a righteous whoa, 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 man whoa, 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 whoa. avails much. No, no, that, there's no righteous man. There's none righteous among us. It says righteous man. That's in the Bible? Righteous, righteous. man. Are you sure? Yes. yes, I'm absolutely sure. Well, you better no, call no Kirk and tell him. Righteous. Lot was declared Sony righteous. Sony artists. He doesn't know that there's righteous people among us. 
Mm. He doesn't know that. Okay. So the effect and fervent prayer of a righteous man, and that's singular, okay, avails much. Mm. So you can e accomplish much, okay, even alone in prayer. And again, pray without ceasing, okay? Pray without ceasing, whether it's by yourself or with others, okay? And preferably, preferably both, okay? So number three, pray biblical mm. prayers. This is so important. Pray biblical prayers. Pray according to God's word. Jesus prayed to the Father, thy will be done. And Jesus teaches us to pray the same. Yeah. Lord, your yeah. will be done. This is the mm. way he teaches us to pray. Because let me tell you, anything else is witchcraft. Anything else is witchcraft. Okay, that is actually the definition of witchcraft. When you manipulate something to your will, okay, that's part of the definition of magic and witchcraft, okay? So we need to pray according to God's word. And his will is his word. Okay, so anything that is in God's word, guys, you can, you can pray for that. Anything that is, that is in God's word, that he says that you can have. Amen. You can pray for that. All his you promises are yes and that. amen. Yes. That's his, God's promises. So other, because otherwise you pray in vain. Yeah, well, see, you know, I, love, I don't want to waste time in my prayers. You know, see, what's God's promise? You know, promises, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Never. Amen. I mean, who can say that? What a promise. A promise from our heavenly father that he will be with us through all time. So we don't have to, anything to fear, okay? Amen. 1 John 5, 14. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he mm -hmm. hears us. Mm -hmm. If we ask anything, anything according to his will, his word, he hears us, okay? And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we, we know we have the petitions. Right. We have that we asked. presented so to God. Once God hears it, he's Boom. done it. Boom. It's done. Yep. Okay? And do not doubt in your heart. Yep. And know if that we it's ask done. according to his will, he hears us. Mm -hmm. Okay? As soon as he hears us, it's done. You know, sometimes we prayed and we believed God, and we haven't seen an, an, an instantaneous result. Yeah. Because that's how we are. Oh, I've got to have it now. Uh, well, I won't believe if I don't see. So if I don't see the results of of my prayers, you know. Yeah, people well, just give up. Well, see, you've are you've already put a condition on God. Wow. You're saying I'm not gonna. If you don't show me, I don't yeah. believe you. Yeah. Well, it's like oh, Prove you, it. you don't do this by this such and such time. Right. By you know. three o'clock today, I need it done. Yeah. Wow. You know? No. Yet you won't spend three minutes with God. You won't even you won't even turn on Facebook Live and sit there with a cup of coffee and yeah. listen to Angela and Veronica. No, you, you know it's like it's a it's a no. You are you'd rather get all dressed up, go to your thirty thousand member church, and be uh, zombieized. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Anyway. Right. So uh, John fourteen thirteen, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, mm. that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Mm -hmm. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So if yes. you ask anything yes. in my name, I will do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. If God is going to be glorified in it, God is going to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. If God is going to be glorified, <sighs> He's going to want to do it for you. Okay. That, that's exciting. That's exciting because I want God to get the glory. I want him to be glorified in my life. Now, this Amen. is just an awesome promise that I found. Um, and I had never seen this in the word of God. It's Isaiah 49, 25. For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. Wow. So in that dream, the devil was contending with me. Mm -hmm. He was contending mm. with me. He was bullying me. He mm. was pushing me. He was, you know, right. I mean, he was contending with me. He says, I will contend with them. Mm -hmm. And it says here, and I will save your children. So I really, uh, that's awesome. I'm going to really hold on that to that. That is awesome. That's, a, that that's an incredible promise. To that word, yeah. 
Okay, number four. Learn spiritual warfare. Learn spiritual warfare. Now, God just happened to school me very early on in my walk, back in, oh my gosh, 1992, okay, about spiritual warfare. Yeah. I mean, the, the books that he led me to were about spiritual warfare. The scriptures he led me to was about spiritual warfare. Um, and I actually remember signing our, you know, our photos, or, you know, like when we signed yeah. our autographs, um, Ephesians 6.12. See, there's the power. The power is the scripture. Not the names. So I, I would sign Ephesians six twelve. Amen. So I hope that other people, you know, saw that, uh, saw and, that and, and, and looked it up. Right and read it. So because that will be just the beginning of your training in spiritual warfare. That's good stuff. So God was already preparing me for spiritual warfare that I would so desperately need in my life later on mm -hmm. <laughs> in, in battling my own demons okay you guys can go back and, and hear my testimony uh, on, our, on our YouTube channel um, I was um, so but to be honest with you I've always known that evil was real even since I was a child I could sense demons I could sense demons as a child I remember being 9 or 10 years old in our house in uh, Puerto Rico and I, I actually sensed demons. So, um, so I cannot stress this enough when fighting for your family. Guys, every believer needs to learn spiritual warfare because this is a spiritual, this is a spiritual fight, mm -hmm. okay? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, all right? So um, what spiritual warfare requires <laughs> This is what spiritual warfare requires. It's two things, two main things. Learning the word of God. If you never learn the word of God, you will never be equipped for the devil. Spiritual warfare requires learning the word of God and knowing your authority in Christ Jesus. Know your authority. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world, okay? You cannot fight a, a devil, okay, without Jesus Christ within you, all right? So that's impossible. All right, so Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Um, and I pray this actually every single night as I'm going to bed. Um, Ephesians 10 through 12, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in, in heavenly places in, or in high places, as King James says. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, above all, it says above all, taking the shield of faith, okay, with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, okay? So you need, um, you need to be saved. <laughs> you need the word of God, and you need to know your authority in Christ Jesus, all right? So uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 3 and 4, for we do not walk in the flesh. Uh, we do not walk in the flesh. We do not war. I'm sorry, for though we walk in the flesh, mm -hmm. We do not war according to the guys. We don't fight against people. We never fight against people. Not that we don't stand up for what we believe because we have to as believers. That's right. But we don't fight uh, in, in the flesh. For the, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God to pull down strongholds. Okay, so whatever has a stronghold on you, whatever has a stronghold 
on another person, okay, you are able to pull that down mm -hmm. and, and to get rid of it. Amen. Okay? So number five, don't, <laughs> this is crazy and I can't believe I'm saying this. Don't preach. <laughs> Just practice what you preach. Oh my goodness. Practice what you preach in order to get the opportunity to preach. Okay? If I'm drunk, I'm, if I I'm, have a, to if I'm a pastor and I'm drinking and I'm drunk, so everything I'm saying is what? Is that preaching or is that the... What? I mean, I'm preaching, but I'm no, drunk. No, you can't preach when you're drunk. Are you sure? No, not possible. Are you sure? So anyway, not in the spirit of God. Okay, so wives, don't preach to your husbands. Hmm. Don't. Don't preach to your husbands. They will not listen. <clears throat> I mean, men don't even listen to other men, much less a woman. Yeah, don't text I mean, me. I hate to say that. <laughs> don't say, don't, please don't send me any Unless you are me. invited, yeah. unless your yeah. advice is invited, it's, it's very hard. It's very hard. I mean, don't waste your time preaching to your husband. Because most likely they're not going to listen. Family members. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's, who's the priest of the house? Right. Who's the pastor of the house? That's right. The That's man. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so. When you're preaching to your man, who's supposedly the spiritual head of your home, then you're out of order. That, what is that? Oh, she. What is that? So she, family she, members are the most <laughs> difficult people to minister to. Ooh. That I mean, we all know that family members are the most difficult people to minister to. It's I mean, my gosh, it's the hardest thing in the world. So all you can do mm. at times. Most times is show them your life. That's good. Show them your life. And that's, and that's like, I pray that all the time. I said, God, show them that you are with us. That's good. Brother. Show them you are with us. Yeah. Whoever, show them you're with us so they can listen and to I, the preaching I, of the word. And I love what you say, Brian, because you're really speaking God's word. If God be for us, then who can be against us? I mean, it's the word of God. That's what you're believing for. And, and so when you speak that, you know, let them see. Let them see that God is for us. That's right. Show them your life. That's strong. Show them what God has done in your Amen. life. And God will show them what he has done yeah, in you, your yeah, you don't life. Have, you don't have to tell anybody. Yeah. Again, God wants to be glorified. So let God. him be glorified in your life. And the best way that that can happen uh, by this, my my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. Mm -hmm. And when you bear fruit in your life, God is glorified. And everybody will see that. Yeah, you know what the biggest weapon is for a Christian? Pride. I know preachers that are so full of pride because they're doing they think they're doing something great. You're not doing anything. If if you're obeying God, that's what you that's when you're doing something. And obeying God, let, let another man praise you with his lips. In other words, I don't need fancy flattery from somebody to say I'm doing a good job. I don't need to be puffed up. Okay, and I don't need my ego to be puffed up. And pride will do that. So pride, you know, so you got to be careful. Even as preachers, preachers, we've got to be careful not to become so puffed up that we have all the answers to, look to every, every solution in the world. Only God does. Only God has a solution for your problem. Angelo and Veronica don't. Any other preachers don't. We can only present to you the word of God that has the answers for you. So show them the fruit of your life. Show right. them God glorified in your life. All right? Um, they will, re believe me, they will reach out to you in their time of need. Oh, that's good. Because when tragedy strikes, mm -hmm. they will mm -hmm. be searching for the godliest person that they know. You know, Veronica, they're gonna they're gonna search for somebody who is close to God. You know what's amazing okay? to me is that most of these people I've watching I was watching this Chris Como today on TV and he goes, you know, oh uh, God be with you, oh my God, you know what God? what God? What are you talking about? Okay, so so but what I'm saying is people you no know, people say they don't want to believe in a in a God or Jesus yet they use it every waking 
Every other sentence, oh my God, God, oh, you know, God be willing, God be with you. What, what God? Okay, know the God that you are serving. That's important. So be ready for that moment. Mm. Okay, be ready, be prepared for that moment when they do come to you and do want to hear God's word. Okay, so. Um, you read this, this one here, Veronica. Yeah. This is good. Uh, First Peter three one and two. Wives, like, and this is why I say, don't preach to your husbands. <laughs> Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives. Ooh. When they observe, when they observe your chaste conduct. Accompanied by fear, not not mm -hmm. fearing them, not fearing man, but the fear of the Lord. It's talking about the fear of the Lord there. There, when they observe your life, when they observe the fruit that you're bearing, okay, they're going to be mm -hmm. convicted. So, one John three eighteen, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Sometimes we just don't need to say anything. And that's that's really hard. I'm not gonna lie. That's hard. Sometimes you just have to not say anything and just do uh, yeah, I'm not do that, something. Yeah, I'm a very do quiet something person. to to love them and to yeah, care for that. I don't spew anything out, you know, I just I, I'm just not that kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let us love so so of course we preach the word, guys. That's our that's our job as Christians, okay? But when it comes to ministering to your family, it's it's sometimes we just have to wait for them to come to us. This is a scripture I, I want to read. That yeah. Things that hinder your prayers. <clears throat> One, husbands not treating their wives right. That's good. First Peter 3, 7. Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to his wife as to the weaker vessel. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Yes. If husbands mm -hmm. don't honor their wives, mm -hmm. their prayers will be hindered. Correct. Period. Oh, my goodness. Honor your wife. If you're cheating on your wife, oh. none of your prayers oh, no, are no, going no, to No, no, no. I tough. cheated, but I got, another, no, no, I got another wife. No, I cheated and I got another wife now, so I'm not cheating on her at the moment. Oh, Give me six no. years and I'll be doing that again. And then uh, another six years, I'll be doing it again. And you know what? I'll be singing God's praises out of my out of the other side of my mouth. So one side of your mouth, you're, you're cursing God, and the other side of the mouth, you're praising Him. Oof. That's a dangerous place, yeah, Christian worship, singers. They worship me in vain, but they're You gospel so singers, you need to pay attention to this message, and I hope you get it. So another thing that will hinder your prayer, number two. Mm. So number one, husbands not treating their wives right. Number two, having sin in your heart. Ooh. Psalm 66, 18, if you regard iniquity, if, if, I re, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear, okay? So if you're meditating on, 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 on lusting in your heart, you know, the, the Lord isn't going to hear you, even if you yeah. don't actually yeah. do it. It says, in the heart. And what's in darkness, my friends, will come to light. It will, right. eventually. Yes, okay. yes. God, ask God to show that to you. Exactly. You so want your prayers so you to be, be saved. heard. So you can be saved. Yeah, and be saved. Mm -hmm. Number three, the practice, things that will hinder your prayers, the practice or lifestyle of sin. And I know people have been very offended when we have brought this scripture oh, to them, but I, it's the word of God. I mean, John 9, 31. Now we know that God does not hear sinners. Hmm. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Oh, wait a minute. So if I do praise and worship, he hears me? No. 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 no, not necessarily. So at, it's thank, you, right thank you, 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 thank <laughs> you. Again, God does not hear sinners. 
even if they're singing for the Lord, God does not hear sinners. Okay, again, talking about the practice or the lifestyle of sin. That's what a sinner is, one who practices sin. If you want to fight with a believer, pull out that scripture. Yeah. And you... Okay, but that's why you have to pray for sinners. <laughs> that's why the righteous have to pray for there sinners. There you go again, righteous. What is that? Okay, so, okay. It's There's none righteous. Like, uh, you can... you, did you hear the gospel say to say that? There's none righteous among us. Okay. They don't anyway. read their Bibles, people. Yeah, let's let's just move on. <laughs> 1 Peter 3.12 For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, Ooh. and his Go ears again. are open to their prayers. Guys, keep your hearts clean <sighs> before the Lord so he can hear your prayers when you're crying out for your child, when you're crying out for your husband and your wife or your cousin or any any family members, okay? And number four, things that will hinder your prayers or your family. James 1 and 6. James didn't play. Here you we want to read that? James 1, James 1, 1 and 6, 6 and 7. 7. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like, the, or like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not the, that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. My goodness so, gracious. So ask in faith with mm -hmm. no doubting. Ask in faith. Again, if you if you pray according to God's word, you will, and he hears you, and, and we know that if we pray the will of God, God hears us. Once God hears us, we have what we have asked. Correct. So there's, there's no doubt. Yeah. There's no doubt that he <laughs> will do it, that he will answer your prayers concerning your family yeah. and and I want to say this last thing and this is so important and the Lord just really showed this to me if all else fails move on if all else fails move on and I'm, I'm gonna explain that I know it seems kind of harsh as much as you love your family God wants you to keep on serving him do not shrink back because of your family who won't serve God. Oh my goodness. Don't shrink back. I have seen this. You're Mothers who shrink you. back because their, their children will not serve God or their husbands won't serve God. Okay? Well, because also, too, of, of denominations. We've divided the brethren with denominations. So what more will the family be divided by? In other words, there, there are Catholic members of, of our family that absolutely think we're going to hell because we're, we're practicing something else that, that they don't necessarily agree with or believe. See, that's where opinion gets in the way of your spirituality. Because if you are, if you are standing on, with, with no understanding of God's word, if you're not reading God's word, you're not studying God's word, if you're not praying without ceasing, like we said here this morning, Amen. okay, then you are not, and I'm not talking about praying to the dead, I'm talking about praying to Jesus. We cannot pray to the dead. They're dead. That's right. Okay? He, That's they're gone. Right. My mother's gone. Yes. She's yes. with Jesus. And okay? your prayers will not be heard if you are praying to the dead. Right. Praying to Mary. Again, right. it, it, it is about rightfully dividing the word of God. And if you don't, you don't have that understanding of God's word, then you have an on against your family member because oh wait a minute, I, I can't you know I can't believe what you believe. Oh, see, there's the dividing factor: believing what somebody else believes because they're taking the scripture out of context because they're not balancing it. They're not rightfully dividing the word of God in spirit and in truth. So keep serving God mm -hmm. and move forward. And I'm talking spiritually. Okay, so because a believing wife or husband is not to leave their spouse because they are unbelievers. Okay, don't be walking out mm -hmm. on your unbelieving spouse. Right. Okay, right. they can walk out on you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says they can walk out on you. You can let them leave. You're not obligated in that situation. Two wrongs don't make a right. You do not walk out on them. You honor your commitment and your marriage, okay? So don't feel bad. You cannot, you, your 
yourself cannot save anyone. Only God can. Let go of them and surrender them to God. That's Give right. them to God. You know what? It's like in your marriage. Somebody asked me today, they said, how do you keep your marriage after 26 years? I said, because we put God first in our marriage. Said, when you get married, you're, you're saying, you're, you're standing before God Almighty for your marriage. So when you divorce your spouse, you're, you're breaking that whole bond between God, your wife, and your husband. It is a very powerful bond. And when you break it, that's why God is so yeah. adamant about marriage. Because it represents Christ. And the and church. It yeah. represents him and his church. That's right. Yeah, that's what marriage Anyway, is. so guys, you know, be, ex be exceedingly excited about what God's going to do in your life when you pray without ceasing, when you, you connect with your family. And you, you know what? Fight for your family. Stand for your family. Believe for your family. Even when... They're coming against you on every side. Stand on the word of God. Eventually, God is going to win.